you know, that might not be a bad idea. Pull that up and, I don't know, maybe get ready to rock and roll with this thing. Hey, I'm ready to go. I got to go get some syrup. I need my French toast. <laughs> and I don't want all the moisture to come out of my mouth when I eat it. <laughs> I sound like the dog when he smacks his lips. <laughs> it's good that you found this out now, though, instead of once a French toast was on your plate. No, but see, here's the thing. If it would have been me in charge of the grocery list, I would have heard, I told you the other day when we had breakfast that we needed more syrup, and you said you'd put it on the list, and now we don't have syrup, but because it was not me in charge of the list, and I'm the one that said, hey, we need some more syrup, and it got left off the list, it was just a, sorry, I'd have got, a, I'd have got chewed out. And we both know it's true. It's just like at your house. It would have chewed you out if it was your fault. I'm not allowed to do the grocery list, so we I'm avoid, not either. We avoid that whole circumstance. <laughs> Tori, Tori doesn't have the courage to talk whatever smack she's talking into the mic, so we can hear. Her. No, you're not just making chicken. I want that French. Toast. Well, you want to hold your horses because I got to get back to the script. Uh, hey guys, welcome back to the wash. Uh, I'm sorry that I have been gone for so long. Um, I was kind of busy. Not really. Um, <laughs> What's it like she got a job? Hush. She's going to lie to people Hush, it's like my that. turn. <laughs> it's my turn, hush. Um, I hope my mom did okay while I was gone. Um, but other than that, how's everything been going? Well, other than, uh, other than the government getting shut down, I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah, Justin fit to be out of a job here soon. <laughs> I'm going to need no. some wash revenue. I got a job just without paycheck. <laughs> My civics teacher made us write suggestions about how to not have the government shut down every year, and he wants to send them to Alex Mooney. I said, no, thanks. Uh, I got suggestions. I got some suggestions. About any of <laughs> we ain't going to get into meddling. Um, yeah, I'm not touching that. So, did some Christmas-like quotes today. Oh, yeah. oh how'd uh, they go? That's, uh, that's about that time. So, if you're going to do Christmas lights or if you're adding it this year, you probably should start advertising for it. So, um. Not bad. Went pretty good. Good. Did anything else? Anything else popping up? No, not really. I don't. I don't know what else. Uh, what else is new? It's pretty pretty much rinse, wash, and repeat. Yeah. I broke the teenager. <laughs> really? Rinse, wash, and repeat. Yeah. All that just that that is how easy it is to annoy a teenager. Isn't that great? It's pitiful, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. It's that- a whole lot easier to annoy a teenager when you're their father. Family get that d- easily d- annoyed d- with us. I'm, I don't know. There are some things that Terry said to me. <laughs> he said, again, I can't tell. He said say some hateful stuff to me, too, but I think it came from a place of love. <laughs> I think so. You think? <laughs> well, I'm not, I wasn't sure at the time. I never caught any of them right hands, so I'm going to go with it. I, 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 never got my, I, never got, I never got poked in the chest with, with, the, with the cigarette butt. So He did one time, so we were in a fight. Um with this suspect and the guy was just real wiry and I accidentally punched Terry instead of the suspect and I caught him right behind his ear so for like a week every day Terry would come in um, and put his fist right behind my ear and remind me he owed me one that was that was my problem butt. is you probably I, hurt your hand on that big old coconut I did hurt my hand. <laughs> I, I think he just likes me more than both of you uh, I mean, that's probably true. Yeah, most likely. <laughs> so you, did, you didn't cause him any havoc. For once, I'm the favorite, and it can't be denied. So what we got uh, on the books today? Well, if you'd hush, I would have finished my sentence and told you. <laughs> um, in this episode, we've got some really interesting news stories. Um, my mom came up with another segment to try out. It looks like it could be interesting, um, and I have a bunch more questions to ask these two, um, and then we'll head into the downstream and went. That's a hard word to read. Well, I know what it is now. Winterize the rig. We're we're we'll winterize it. Oh my goodness! I don't pay attention in English class. Public apparently. education is failing this <laughs> child. But it's a good thing you pay good money for public education. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Okay, so uh, we have this little news article here. Um, the Phillies deny entry of this man's emotional support alligator into the ballpark. What? <laughs> 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 I 
I mean, the Phillies, the Philadelphia Phillies baseball team. I'm surprised they didn't uh-huh. throw batteries at it. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Some of Philly fans can be hateful. A Phillies fan and his emotional support animal, an alligator named Wally Gator, were denied entrance to watch the Philadelphia host Pittsburgh. Um, social media posts showed the alligator on a leash with a harness with his name on its outside on the stadium on Wednesday. Please, please tell me, he, please tell me he had a service vest. I, I hope so. Listen, uh, we got some experience with service animals and <laughs> and locations. You can't say no. Apparently, the reptile has a big presence on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, he's, he, it says he's a working emotional support alligator. So, uh, I do believe somebody fitting to get sued. Come on, Phillies, do better. Yeah, you gotta do better than that. I know, I know, everybody's scared of a gator, but the law is a law. If it's registered as an emotional support, you can't turn him away. Put, put that man up in a in a boot in a in a suite by himself and let him and his alligator enjoy some. That's right. Some okay. baseball. Speaking of the Phillies, did they clinch last night? I do not know. Did they clinch a playoff berth? I don't know. I do not know. The only one of us with a cell phone around here is you and, and the host. And we'll we'll look that host, up on our break. I think the host job should be to find it out. We'll look that uh, up. The host does not want to use up her time on her phone, so y'all look it up. Oh, we'll look it up. Nice. <laughs> um, the Phillies apparently stated that guide dogs, service animals, or service animals in training are welcome. All other animals are prohibited. Um, but it's a service animal. I Apparently think, not according to them. I think they just backed themselves into a lawsuit. Yeah, I think they did. You, know, I, you can't dictate what is, as long as it's registered lawfully. Now, I'm not sitting next to him because... <laughs> <laughs> accidentally step on the gator. Oh, I'm so, oh never mind. Guess yeah. I'm not apologizing now. What if a foul ball hits that gator and he gets all bent out of shape about <laughs> it? I don't want to be there. What if, or, or that gator wants your chili dog. Yeah, I ain't eating no chili dogs. Like <laughs> oh, yeah, do better, Phillies. Yeah, that's not okay. I take it you two have news articles y'all want to talk about? Yeah, what you got? I have a Danish artist who submitted empty frames as artwork is appealing the court ruling to repay the cash. What? So, uh, it's just one of these crackpot liberals that said this is abstract art so it's a danish artist who was given a pile of cash um their equivalent uh amount of money to u.s dollars would be sixty nine thousand eight hundred ninety four dollars um can i have some for (laughs) for a picture frame (laughs) it's uh to create a piece for its uh exhibit on labor conditions two years ago Okay, so they the Danish court ruled last week that the artist had to repay the sixty nine thousand eight hundred ninety four dollars to the museum for having violated his contract. His lawyer says um, Wednesday and that the contemporary artist is appealing the ruling and declined further comment. The museum had commissioned the artist in twenty twenty one to recreate two of his earlier pieces. Okay. Featuring banknotes attached to canvases representing the average annual wage in Denmark, Austria. Instead, he submitted two empty ca- canvases for the exhibit entitled Work It Out. Said the entitled Work It Out said the artwork represented his current work situation and he kept the money. There's no way. That's, that's. I don't know what they call uh, it in Denmark, but I'm pretty sure here in well, good old West by God they call that a breach of contract. Well, <laughs> and, and so the the money was for the the artwork itself. Like it wasn't. They weren't paying him. From what I'm understanding, that money was supposed to go on the artwork, and then they paid him thirty nine hundred. The equivalent of thirty nine hundred U.S. Oh, so he dollars embezzled for his it. Labor. Oh, so it's embezzlement. Yeah, as I'm reading this deeper, <laughs> it actually looks like the money that he was originally given was to go on these canvases. Oh, so it's grand larceny embezzlement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's this is getting bad. This dude. He declined. That's a whole other level of stupid. He denies having committed a crime and insists he did produce a work of art. Produced a work of art, my rear end. It's an empty frame. I got a whole opinion about <laughs> hey, what hey, is art. I have a question. One of y'all want to take me to Walmart so I can get a picture frame that's apparently worth $69,000? Uh, 
Uh, I'm pretty. Justin, I'm pretty. You. I'm pretty sure you ain't gonna pass that off around here. <laughs> yeah. Best thing you're gonna get out of that's a wood fire. Yeah. That's uh. Well. That's not happening. Can I play with fire? No, uh, that's not oh. happening either. No. Don't need it. All right. Well, this one. Arson. This one's pretty. This one's uh not really uh, odd news, but it's it it's kind of funny if you uh, you own your own business and you do repairs. You understand what stuff, how stuff happens. All right. Uh, Frank Rubio finally returned to Earth after spending 371 days in space by accident. All right. So he was on the International Space Station. Um, he was supposed to come home uh, in March of 2022. Yeah, he was supposed to come home uh, March 28th of 2022. Uh, they were leaving the International Space Station and their... Uh, spacecraft got hit by a space of spa- a piece of space junk in December of 2022, and it controlled it, caused an uncontrolled radiator leak. Uh, yeah, bust a radiator. Bust a radiator. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not good. The un- unrepairable capsule. They so basically, they uh, feats don't fail me now. Got back in the International Space Station and cut the capsule loose, and it fell back to Earth, and they were stuck back up there another year. <laughs> Um, <laughs> could you imagine? Accidentally well, stuck in you're space. You're on your way home, and you got to turn around and go back. Hey, babe. So what had happened was oh, no. we got hit by a piece of space junk. Hey, honey. I'll see you around next Christmas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that welcome home party you got planned, all that, all them decorations, that cake. Can you, you make? See if maybe they keep that on ice for a year. <laughs> I think I'd wow. prefer the "Hey, honey, I shrunk the kids" call than the "Hey, well, honey, I'm stuck in space." Can we shrink the kids? Can we? Can somebody can no. please invent that. No. The, the kid no. shrinking rate. No. I don't so think my so. man did. My man did uh, five thousand nine hundred thirty-six orbits around the Earth, Ooh. which equates to about one hundred fifty-seven million miles. Wow. Uh, he miles. carried out three spacewalks totaling 21 hours and had diff- 28 different crewmates on the International Space Station. Wow. Well, um, you know. So here's my question. They obviously brought and took people. Couldn't he have just hitched a ride with a cosmonaut or I something? Mean- uh, something maybe he didn't want to go home maybe maybe that's why he just didn't hit your ride maybe he, he had teenage like, daughters at home <laughs> that's worth looking up right there he was like i know i gotta go back to the house but another year don't sound so bad <laughs> another year should be graduated high school Uh-oh. <laughs> ain't gotta deal with this attitude oh. anyways congratulations and welcome back to earth Mr. Yes. rubio i hate both of you well that's not nice it's accurate. Um, first off, I would like to point out that both of you are jerks. Um, and we are going to take a break for a few minutes. Um, and we will be right back. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? This is Eddie with Blue Line Pressure Washing. I uh, want to take a minute to appreciate the fact that you guys are listening and watching our podcast. And I also want to tell you about a company that I've been working with here recently. Uh, called Home Service Business Coaching. I am not being paid to tell you about this. There's no sponsorship or any other deal worked out between Blue Line Pressure Washing or myself and Home Service Business Coach. That being said, uh, David and the entire team at HSBC have helped me elevate my business to the next level. Uh, They've helped me develop systems for my business. They've helped me scale uh, as well as uh, provided guidance and mentorship in all facets of the business. It's not a how-to program. It's not going to teach you how to do the the job. It's not going to teach you uh, how to wash a roof or how to wash a house. It's to teach you how to become a CEO, basically, and scale your business and uh, do it effectively. Uh, If you want to be more profitable, get out of the service vehicles uh, and put the right people in place to work in your business so that you can focus on becoming a CEO and growing your business, I highly recommend this program. It is, uh, you know, a little, it's a high ticket item. You get what you pay for, but it, it is worth it. I've been in the program for several months now. I've scaled my business, grown uh, exponentially since I've been in it. And uh, 
it, it's definitely worth it. And Coach David, Landon, Chemo, Jackson, AJ, all top-tier business coaches in sales and um, helping you scale and figure out what you need to do and helping you get clear some of the bottlenecks in your business. So if you want to be like me and stop being in the truck all day and get in the office, surround yourself with a great team of rock star employees, then you need to surround yourself with a great business coach. And I strongly recommend Home Service Business Coach. Their link will be in the description of the episode on the podcast on YouTube and also on Anchor Podcast. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. We'll talk soon. Teenager break. Put an AirPod in and <laughs> pick up a cell phone. Teenager break. Yes. Well, my phone's at 3%, so there won't be many more teenager breaks. <laughs> oh, that's a good thing. Um, oh, why is that? Hello. Please hold. Uh, toy didn't break something. Toy didn't break nothing. Now my belly's saying a little my backbone over here. You want to speed this process up a smidge? <laughs> You know, maybe, just maybe, if you didn't eat, like, a pig. Yeah, and I'm not going to finish that sentence. Never mind. It's going to give me smack. You eat more than I do. Okay, and we're back. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys for listening to the stuff about the other companies. Um, We are going to start a new segment that uh, my mom just came up with. Um, So you both have little stacks of paper. Um, Uncle Justin, you were going first. Just flip it over and read the first one. Uh, what if I show? What if I? What if I messed up or uh, shuffled them up? Well, then you shuffled them up. Just read it. <laughs> All right. Out loud to the class. <coughs> All right. The police receive a report of a newborn infant found in a trash can. Upon further investigation, the officers discover it was only a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Let somebody check. What? Somebody, what? somebody check the twenty on Jones. <laughs> Where you at, Mikey? Where you at? All right, I guess I'm supposed to. to go no, next. it's your turn. That, 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 the first one, not oh, the, the first, first one. one off. The, oh my goodness. Two, four, six. Is this one of these like stories that just keep adding on? Police were called no. to Market Square for a report about a suspicious coin. Investigating officer reported it was a quarter. What? <laughs> that reminds me of that time federal police called in and thought that there was a bomb there by MVB Bank on Foxcroft Avenue uh, because they saw somebody messing with one of the light poles and the cover that goes over oh, the light yeah. pole. It, it was that geotagging. Oh. It was a geotagging egg. Like, they're they're getting out the caution tape and everything else, and I show up and I was like, hey, what what's going on in there? They started telling me. And I walked over. He goes, what are you doing, man? We got to call the bomb, the bomb dog in. I said, uh, no, come here. Let me show you something. He goes, don't lift that up. Or if it's photo cell, if I said if it was a photo cell, it'd have blown up when the other dude lifted it up. With it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, you do what you can do. <laughs> All right, what we got here? Oh, I got a book. <laughs> My man reported that a squirrel was running in circles on Davis Drive and was not sure if it was sick or it had been hit by a car. Officer responded, <gasps> and as he drove on the street, he ran over the squirrel. I've done this. Oh, no. I've done this. I ran over a rabbit one time oh, on St. Andrews oh, Drive. Oh, oh, oh. Was, of course it was St. Andrews. <laughs> it was, I was responding to a, 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 a out to help the county and uh, responding to a hit dog call. So I was looking for a dog a and ran right over a rabbit. <laughs> poor little uh. rabbit. Well, our, just, our viewer selection just went uh, down. I didn't run it over on purpose. You hit the West Gooey Wabbit. I gotta, <laughs> I, I gotta get a head nod over here. Is, did you find these? These are actual call. Oh my! Yeah, goodness. they are. They're all on uh, my screen. I mean, screen. it doesn't surprise me, but see, she wrote them down on paper for you guys. I get the screenshots of them, so I see uh, them all. The Learning Center on Hanson Street reports a man across the way stands at his window for hours watching the center. Making parents nervous. So police ID the suspect as, <laughs> as a cardboard cutout of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Been there, done that. Five Points Avenue, that uh, 
<laughs> uh, Adam's family cardboard cutout that you're not expecting about yep. 2 o'clock in the morning. Look up and that thing's looking at you. Remember the house over on Burke Street that we used to have to clear that that, that dude stored all the mannequins in? Oh, my god. I almost goodness. shot a mannequin uh, in that yeah. house. <laughs> shot um, a mannequin? Yeah, it scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I almost shot a hole in Terry Stanley's house because... <laughs> Because the alarm went off and Terry and Michelle and uh, Madison, their daughter, was uh, up in Hardy County at, at Terry's in-laws. So the alarm goes off and I've got Terry's keys. I go over there and I go in. I'm searching the house. I'm going down the steps. And I see this life-size cardboard cutout that at first looked like a person. And I draw down on that thing and find <laughs> out later after <laughs> after I got a good look at it that it was a cardboard cutout of one of the vampires from that... Uh, Come on, Tori. Twilight. What, Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> I texted Terry. I said, there ain't nobody here, but I almost put a hole in the basement because of that stupid car. <laughs> 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 oh. I hope it was Edward. I hope you almost shot Edward Cullen. <laughs> I don't know who it was. I know. It was Edward. <laughs> to the class, please. A man, a man came to the sheriff's department to find out how to legally kill a person who was harassing him. If that person winds up dead, I know who's getting arrested. <laughs> I don't think there's a crime here, but there's definitely something suspect. <laughs> Hold on, I'm buffering. I can't believe people are that stupid. Oh, I can. Oh yeah, yeah, I can. Well, I know you can. Y'all have been. We've doing had this crap we, we've for had we've had people. Who pe- knows how long? I, uh, I, I remember. I know, um, Eleven years. I, I think it was Rouse, either either Rouse or Neely. Somebody uh, took a report. Somebody came in and um, you know reported somebody that stole their drugs from them. And they wanted to file a, a, a theft report. Rouse had one. Um, I had a guy report a burglary. And then when we got there, he wouldn't tell us what was stolen. And uh, Rouse, <laughs> Rouse looked at him and goes, why don't you just tell us how much weed they stole? And uh, the guy just kind of puts his head down. And I'm like, did you seriously call the cops because somebody <laughs> broke in your house and stole your dope? And he goes, Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, magically right? magically it's always dope and 250 bucks <laughs> it is it's always I had about 250 bucks laying around uh-huh. always that's fact all right looks like the last one here a deputy responded to a report of a vehicle stopping at mailboxes oh come on it was a mailman <laughs> I mean, what what is he supposed to do? Stop, stop ten feet away from the house. Sorry, can't come any closer. Come and get it. Like, I, I don't know what. Over the mailman. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh my god. But you know, some of the people that I've talked to, yeah, I would. I'm not surprised. Yeah. This makes my head hurt. Okay. Wow, that's pretty funny. I like that. The, <laughs> It was a mi- no. Mm-mm. Okay, my turn. Um, what is your favorite way to unwind and recharge? Video games. Nah, I didn't realize that. What'd you say? Video games. Yeah, I I like to sit and do nothing. Play Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft. There you go. <laughs> See, we was just, just we was the police. I- now we're the criminals. <laughs> Just because I know this stuff and I don't need you to elaborate doesn't mean the people that or, we're talking or like to don't UFC, know. Because every once in a while you just need to punch somebody yeah, in the that, face, but you're not allowed to do it lawfully. Yeah, but that <laughs> game, that, that that certain games aren't relaxing. They just bring my blood pressure up. <laughs> What's that? Uh, <laughs> playing hockey with him? Yeah, well, uh, hockey yeah. will do it. Yeah, uh, well, Tori, <laughs> Tori took a week, learned how to play the game, played I've, against me. She was supposed to take it the full week and play at least once a day. She I didn't. forgot. And so then she had her game against me. I was the Hershey Bears. She was the Capitals. The only thing she won was the fight between Connor McMichael and Tom Wilson. I was sitting there screaming the whole time. I played against him again. And Mom was down there the second time I played against him. Because the first time she was in Florida with Cara. Didn't you get beat like 22 to 1? It was not that bad. First off, thank you. And no, I didn't even score a goal. That's because I quit playing after the second period. And uh, no, you're wrong because I didn't score a goal. Um, (laughs) Not one in two games. Not one. Not a single goal. (laughs) Um, But I was sitting down here jumping up and down on the couch screaming, throwing a fit. I'm glad video games relax y'all. They make me want to have an aneurysm. Yeah. Well, we play ho- when we do play hockey online together, that's relaxing to us, although we can't do it because it's generally nighttime when we play. So we get to laughing uh, and hollering and cussing. <laughs> wake the baby up. <laughs> at each other. <laughs> we wake the baby up. See, I like playing baseball with you, but you won't let me play it because it messes up my timing. It does. 
and I, but I want to play it. Well, when your softball career is over, you can play. <laughs> it's two years from now. That's not my problem. That's your problem. <laughs> What's the next question? What you're whining? No, thank you. Um, in your opinion, what is the most crucial personality trait stress bleh, slash strength someone would need to work in your industry or be thriving in your job? Hmm. That's not a trait. People skills. You got to know how to talk to people. Well, I guess it's Don't good. <laughs> you, like, yeah. You're saying people skills. <laughs> no, you, you, yeah, I think that's probably, he's, he's on to it. That, I got people <laughs> skills for people who ain't criminals. <laughs> no, you, you've got to have, uh, you've just got to have a knack for um, talking to people, you know, having a little bit of, again, patience. This patience thing comes up. Yeah. But you, you do develop it. Um, well, I wish he would develop a stronger, uh, I can't think of the word I was going to say. Um, I wish it would apply to me, too. Well, that yeah, that doesn't work in the house. Well, when you spent the last 16 years doing everything to aggravate a person, the patience level doesn't come. Why do you think I didn't, you annoy me so much? Yeah. Yeah, well. It goes both I'll, ways. Yeah, no, I, well, and you've got to have, you've got to have an ability to hustle. you got to be able to go out and, and actually yeah. get up in the morning and, and be productive. Yeah. Um, get off the phone and get out and actually do something with your hands. That felt like a dig. Do you think? I made him get up at 6.40 in the morning to take me to school the other day because my bus is overfilled and I had to bring my bat bag. And he was sitting in there cussing me out the whole way to school. Good, 6.40 in the morning. 6.40 in the morning. <laughs> the last thing I want to do is drive around a bunch of high school students. Okay, you got them walking everywhere. They can't me. drive to save their lives. Okay. I almost got hit three times just trying to get out of the parking lot. Come on. Who's giving out these lights? <laughs> Kellogg's. It's a cracker <laughs> box. No. Um, we love the hoodie that he yelled at me and told me I wasn't allowed to wear um, because this is blue line pressure washing and I'm wearing a red line hoodie. Um, Treacherous traitor. Everybody needs a hero. But <laughs> <laughs> we were rolling hoses today and I was struggling with one specific hose roll and he said, that's okay. Some people are naturally firefighters and some people are just naturally cops. Well, I mean. Yeah, well, again. Why did why did God make uh, police officers, Tori? So the firefighters have some have heroes too. Yeah, that's what I said. Everybody needs a hero. And firefighters claim that if y'all score just a little bit higher on y'all's tests, you could be firefighters too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, fi- who the firefighters call when there's a mouse interrupting making the chili? That's right. <laughs> they call the cops. Come out and get the that's mouse. That's right. Who they call when someone steals that bench? <laughs> oh, if somebody steals that bench, they're gonna be wanting a full investigation. <laughs> um, okay. Well, <laughs> I like I like this question because I have a feeling I know what my father's answer is gonna be. What was your favorite subject or class in school, and your least favorite subject or class? Um, favorite would be the criminal justice class at Rumsey. No kidding. Least favorite geometry. Called it. I'd rather you hit me in the face and make me ever do that stuff again. <laughs> Can see, I? See, I, I loved I loved math and geometry and chem, and on? chemistry. That's because he's touched in the head, y'all. I hated, I absolutely hated art and music. Hated it. <laughs> hated it. <laughs> we, we can't, can't talk about art. We can't talk about my art class because that art teacher still hates my guts to this hated day. Hated it. And, oh, I'm surprised. Riley and I well, were just talking about this the other day. Well, maybe flies and books. I'm surprised. Riley and I were just talking about this the other day. I, I'm, it's a wonder in middle school band that I didn't just get completely kicked out because I hated band so much. And in middle school, they make you take one or the other. They make you take an art or a music. Mm-hmm. And I hated it. And I, yeah. could, I couldn't sing. So they're like, all right, well, you can go play an instrument, which I had no interest in. Like, so every four to six weeks, I would switch instruments. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I wasn't good at any of them. I have a question. What page are we on? I don't know. That's why his art teacher hated him. Yeah. I had to ask the art teacher what page we were on one time because there was a fly I flying mean, around the room. And it, it was aggravating the snot out of all of us. Tony tried to kill it. Ben tried to kill it. And then it landed in my book. And I did one of these numbers. And bang! And that art teacher spun around. And she goes, that fly had better not be in that book. And I was like, what, what, what page was we on? <laughs> she tells me I opened the book up. And sure enough, I, I got him. He's in that book. I went, 
He's not. Not anymore. <laughs> um, I would have taken. I would have taken shop and home act twice. Yes, I love some home act though. See, we got to make him little pizzas. We don't actually yeah. have home yeah, act. We also had to make him boxer shorts too. You remember that? I was good at selling. Uh, yeah, I sewed my finger to the shorts at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Step myself into the needle. Ugh. See, we don't actually have home ec at my school. It's we in middle school. You can take it. Actually, I think they got rid of it now because I took it. But you do uh, section uh, laundry sewing. Well, they need to have a life skills section. Yeah, they do. They but they only have it at middle school. And if you take like a choir class or you're in band or anything like that, then you can't take that class that, at the it, middle school. Life Skills 101 should be a, a mandatory yeah. class now for your generation. Well, it's not. Um, but because I you all just baking. You all barely manage to keep yourselves alive. Yeah. At, at least I don't sew my finger to boxer shorts. Okay, I know how to sew. Yeah. Okay. Listen, I got, the, I got them done, okay? That's the important part. <laughs> the project was complete, and I wore them suckers for What color years. were they supposed to be? What oh, color? I'm not stupid. I made them brown in case anybody ever scared the crap no, out of them. No, that's not... No. Um, how much red was on them? <laughs> None. Thank you very much. I was able to get it away from there. But next question. Or let's move on here. Uh, what it is... caused me to say some things I'm not supposed to say on the air. Well, I guess you're just going to have to exercise those patience you said you need to work in this field. <laughs> um, what is your least favorite character from a TV show? Least favorite character. That's a broad question. Yeah. Like, you could have at least given us a TV show to work with. Um. She she wrote the question. I would like to point that out. I don't know what TV shows he watches. What do you watch? Excuse me, sir. Green shirt, the one Um, I don't live with. What do you watch? Oh, I'm I'm thinking. (laughs) You know what? Let's go with the let's go with the Witcher. No, let's not because I don't remember characters in the show. Um. Oh, jeez. Ah, man, I like that show so much, though. Everybody's I'm going with ev- Philippa. Philippa Owlhart. She's just evil. She is. She that's is. Bad. That's even worse. <laughs> Probably deep. Game of Thrones. Joffrey Baratheon. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Who's the Who's the one guy who burned his stepdaughter alive? Oh, yeah, that... Uh, Stannis Baratheon. Yeah, Stannis Baratheon. He was a winner, too. Y'all done? Because yeah. I have no idea who these characters yeah, go are. Ahead. So I can't, <laughs> I can't say anything. Um, excuse me. Stop doing that. I don't like, I don't like your iPad. Um, oh, Ju- Judith on Two and a Half Men drove, drove me crazy, Oh, too. man. She got all mine. She was so a bee. Whiny. Oh, I don't think you're technically even supposed to give the word on air. What? Excuse me, just move on. <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to take another break. Oh, uh, I, thought, <laughs> I thought you had another question. I would otherwise, you I'd hush? let you to <laughs> Go ahead. Hush. Uh, we're going to take another break. Um, listen. Up to, uh, How about we're just going to take another what? break? We'll catch up with you guys when we get back. What he said. Hey, guys, what's going on? This is Eddie with Blue Line Pressure Washing. I want to take a minute to appreciate the fact that you guys are listening and watching our podcast. And I also wanted to tell you about a company that I've been working with here recently uh, called Home Service Business Coaching. I am not being paid to tell you about this. There's no sponsorship or any other deal worked out between Blue Line Pressure Washing or myself and Home Service Business Coach. That being said, uh, David and the entire team at HSBC have helped me elevate my business to the next level. Uh, They've helped me develop systems for my business. They've helped me scale uh, as well as uh, provided guidance and mentorship in all facets of the business. It's not a how-to program. It's not going to teach you how to do the the job. It's not going to teach you uh, how to wash a roof or how to wash a house. It's to teach you how to become a CEO basically and scale your business and uh, do it effectively. Uh, If you want to be more profitable, get out of the service vehicles uh, and put the right people in place to work in your business so that you can focus on becoming a CEO and growing your business, I highly recommend this program. It is, uh, you know, a little, it's a high ticket item. 
you get what you pay for, but it, it is worth it. I've been in the program for several months now. I've scaled my business, grown uh, exponentially since I've been in it, and uh, it, it's definitely worth it. And Coach David, Landon, Chemo, Jackson, AJ, all top-tier business coaches in sales and um, helping you scale and figure out what you need to do and helping you get clear some of the bottlenecks in your business. So if you want to be like me and stop being in the truck all day and get in the office, surround yourself with a great team of rock star employees, then you need to surround yourself with a great business coach. And I strongly recommend Home Service Business Coach. Their link will be in the description of the episode on the podcast on YouTube and also on Anchor Podcast. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. We'll talk soon. Okay. Uh, hey guys, we're back. Um, these two are going to, we're into the downstream now. They're going to talk about how to winterize your system. When to winterize your system. It doesn't say that. It just says winterize. Who made these run sheets? Me and Jen. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I blame you for the lack of spelling. I blame you for the lack of reading because it says when. (laughs) I don't know what you're talking. That's all the way up at the top. Okay, that's all the way back up at the top. I'm not up there. I'm down here. Ah, well. Mm-hmm. You want to kick us off? Yeah, so uh, this is location dependent. We're going to preface that. Yeah. Because there's some locations in the country that um, you don't have to winterize your rigs because you can work you around. But from where we're, where we're at and pretty much north of here, um, you better be winterizing your rigs and getting your rigs set up for you know to s- sustain operation during the winter um pressure washing and soft washing equipment obviously hinges on moving water through parts and what happens to water when it gets cold freezes it freezes and when it freezes ice uh, dams yep when it freezes it creates ice and ice and plastic parts and and plastic tubing and oh, valves right. and stuff like that they don't they don't work well together with ice um and the bad the worst part about finding out that you've got ice damage uh, you don't know until you go to go to uh, spin your rig up in the spring. Yeah. And you got water pouring out everywhere. You got cracked pump heads, cracked uh, fittings, manifolds. I mean, I, none of this stuff is cheap. I mean, we all know that by now. If you're in this industry for any given period of time, you know that none of this stuff is cheap. Uh, so the last thing you want to do is be gearing up to go on spring and, and hitting your first customer's house. You get there. Um, and your blend manifold is just shot. Now you've got to go spend seven, eight, nine hundred dollars on a new blend manifold. Um, so those are, you know, if you're going to take the risk and not winterize, that's that's the risk you run. You can spend, you know, one about a hundred dollars yeah. to winterize it um, and be safe, or you can take a risk of not winterizing it and spend anywhere from. 800 to $2,500. Yeah, depend, depending. I mean, um, frozen pressure washer pump, you're looking at seven, 800 bucks. Yeah. So, uh, you don't, you don't drain tanks. You got a cracked yeah. water tank. Um, you know, we've seen a, we've seen a good, a good gamut of, yeah, of people doing all kinds of stuff with their units. Um, uh, but the big thing is just come up with a plan. Whether it's, if you've got a, if you've got a, a thermo, uh, you know, a, um, environmentally controlled garage then sure then you know back put your rig in the garage take it off the truck put it in the garage and and you're good to go um but if you got you know something that's not climate controlled like mine that's you know out out in elements um i've i've even got to winterize the as i learned the hard lesson last this year i've even got to winterize the the water system because we don't use the water out there during the winter so it's the same thing you take care of your stuff it'll take care of you yeah so what you're going to want to do is, um, once temperatures start dropping, you know, hitting those freezing marks, uh, you want to get the water out of your tank, run either washer fluid or RV antifreeze through it. Um, some pressure washers, if, you're, if your pressure washer hooks up to the water source from a garden hose, you can buy a pump saver and, you know, hook that up to it, run some of that through it, and you're kind of pretty much good to go. Uh, bleach is uh, 19 degrees and colder is when bleach starts to freeze and then your surfactant i would treat surfactant kind of like the water and 
it doesn't freeze uh, at 32 degrees. It's a little bit colder than that, but it's not as cold as bleach. It, so. it, it, I guess the soap in it slushes up. Yeah. It, it just becomes a mess. So there's <clears throat> there's partial winterizing, which is what I was just talking about. If it's going to get down to like 32, 30 degrees, somewhere around in there, I'll winterize the water tank, leave the other two alone. If it gets below 30, then the water tank and the uh, surfactant tank get winterized. And if it drops below 19, then all three. And then you got to decide, make up a de- determination of, based on your climate, what time of year you're going to shut down. If you're going to shut down, like we generally shut down about the second to third week of November. We don't wash anymore. Uh, we'll pull it out in, in an emergency situation. Um, yeah. But... Th- yeah, typically it sets in the garage till what, first week of February? Yeah. Second week of February. Yes. Um, what classifies as an emergency situation? Well, well not an emergency for <laughs> us. It's not an emergency for us, but a homeowner wants to sell their house. Uh, you'd be amazed how much more money you can get for a house if the house is clean versus covered in organic growth. The curb appeal, a real, real estate agent contact you, and, and once it's done, and they're willing to pay the price that I'm going to charge to come out in 40-degree weather and december and wash the house or send justin out at 35 degree weather and bye bye wash a house yeah so but yeah so so exigent circumstances like that but um typically those are one off and and they got to be a a legit reason somebody we've worked for worked with before yeah uh no uh, because we're kind of at the point in our company where we're once we once we shut this once we shut it down we're focused on other stuff for the winter so um, once the rig is off the truck, the rig's off the truck. So, but the biggest thing is come up with a game plan. Yeah. Come up with a game plan that works for your environment, your client, or your uh, clients, your climate, and stick to that game plan. Um, you know, uh, have a plan B. It's I, we see it so so often and hear about it so much. There's so many times that washers take the risk, don't winterize, and then wind up with busted up equipment. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that can put you out of business. Um, starting off spring, if you you know if you segued enough of, or squirreled away enough money uh, to run your business through winter time and, and cover your bills and all that stuff, that's great. But I mean, what if you have like a, a click lease leasing policy or plan, you know, loan on your yeah. equipment, and you do eight thousand dollars worth of damage to it? Are you going to have that eight thousand dollars capital to be able to to spend up front at the very beginning of the season to rebuild a unit that you have and that you're already paying on right so um a couple of th- other things to keep in mind if you are in some of those southern climates or western climates that that don't uh you know experience um i guess lengthy freezes like we right. do but do dip into that pay attention to your pay attention to your weather because there were a whole bunch of people. Remember um, last year? Last year, uh, Texas. Fl- yeah, Texas and Florida both had those yep. just sudden spells of freeze, uh, you know, three or four days worth freezing temperatures. And there was a lot of people on our on the threads and stuff like that that were complaining that their stuff got busted up because they had no, you know, they had no preparation for that. Yeah. Yeah, there was, I think, um, I think we saw a video from like Cody at Southeast. Had to st- he stopped over at someone's house in Texas and helped them. You know, with a winterized rig that, yeah. or a rig that got froze up because it it jumped out at them. I mean, there's other things you can do. There's some guys that use like uh, heat lamps and tarps um, to keep everything from freezing up. If it's in a going to be a one and done type of thing, you can go that route. Um, the yeah, you park it in a garage, get a, a heated storage unit. Um, those different kind of things. I'm a little bit hesitant on the heat lamp thing. I'm just paranoid. But a, a lot of guys do it, and it works just fine. Uh, also, trailers. I know if you have a trailer, you can set a heat lamp or, or a little small um, space heater in there. I just... Keep uh, them warm. Yeah, I just... I'm very. I'm like you. I'm very leery about that. Not not only using the electricity, but... Um, it don't... Don't start a fire in your house using a heat lamp or a, you know, a, a 
ceramic heater or something like that because you're trying to keep Don't your unit warm. Don't use no warm. torpedo heaters in there. Yeah, you ain't kidding. Because <laughs> uh, those things are notorious for short circuiting and catching fire and just just be safe. Use yep. some common sense about what you're doing with your stuff. Not to mention, make sure you're putting it at a good distance where you're not melting. Yeah, don't, don't melting get them too, your stuff. Don't get them too close because we don't want to melt it. it uh, that that would be actually, I think, worse than free, <laughs> could you than imagine, freezing them. Could you imagine coming out in spring and firing your unit up, filling up your water tank, and it all just running out the bottom? Yeah. Because you just melted a hole in your... That would upset me a little bit. A little bit. Um, what about... Uh, what about winter as an auxiliary equipment? So if you've got water fed, if you got water fed window systems, or you've got um, uh, water collection systems, or they need to be drained, um, drain them out. You don't necessarily need to run anything through those uh, because they're not sealed systems per se. You can you can fully drain those and not um, take a long time about it. Whereas like a, a skid unit or a trailer unit, if you're going to fully drain that, that could take some time. Um, and you may not get it all out. Whereas with like a water-fed purification system, you can you can pretty easily drain those down yeah. and get everything out of them. Yeah, you could go one step up too if you're in the more more northern climates. Uh, pull your manifolds off. Yeah. You know, pull your vital pull your vital parts to your system off. Pull your manifolds off. Pull your pump off. Take them inside where it's climate controlled. Um, that way, you definitely don't risk injuring yeah. any of your your high dollar stuff. Yeah, uh, again, at the end of the day, you've got to figure out the best method for you. If you have questions of what could be a good way to winterize for your area or if there's, you know, something you want to ask, we're more than happy to answer the question. Um, But there's not any one right answer to this particular issue. But guys that are especially, this is mostly for newer guys in the industry. Uh, Most of the older veterans already know this, but... Don't sleep on the climate this year. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna be getting cold here pretty soon for most of us. Some of you guys are already cold, uh, and I really don't want to see a whole crap ton of Facebook posts and stuff like that again this this coming spring about guys who are in a pinch because they froze up their units. Yeah, nothing's nothing's more nothing's more upsetting than you know somebody who's excited to, at what they're doing and all of a sudden now they got to shut their doors because they. Yeah. Let let their you know let their dollar making machine get busted up because of weather. Yeah. So I think that's about all we can really. T- I mean, there's not it's not a deep topic you can really get into, but it is something that's important that needs to be discussed. I think that's about all we have. For- well, we can go one more element deep to as uh, all, all of your equipment on the truck. I almost got my French toast. <laughs> all, all of your equipment on the truck. So ladders. Ladders, uh, um, um, brushes, buckets, like all your auxiliary equipment. That stuff is not major stuff, but yeah, I mean, don't what, leave what, it out. In what's the a little giant? What's a little giant ladder cost now? Uh, a couple hundred. I mean, bucks. They're, they're a couple hundred bucks, right? Yeah. You, you know, and a, a couple of your cleaning buckets. You know, you leave them out and let them get cracked. You know, you're up. You know, eight or ten bucks a bucket. You know, just just stuff just like that. Stuff take that care. Take care of your stuff. Put your stuff away, um, and it'll take care of you. I didn't yep. know Little Giant was a brand of ladder, and you just gave me an idea for a joke at my Rumsey instructor. There you go. You're welcome. I'm happy, I'm happy about it, <laughs> so, and I want to know what he has to say. Her Rumsey instructor is a friend of ours. We, so. uh, we make fun of him 24-7. It's quite entertaining. I like having a teacher I can make fun of without getting in trouble, and he makes fun of me, too. Well, you make it easy for him. All right, so... <laughs> In our next episode, we're going to talk about loyal employees. I think we're going to drag Evan and Samantha. I'd say we go, dr- we go drag. We're going to, we go, I hate we go both drag of you. Samantha in here. Am I, get, yep. am I going to get kicked off? No, nope. okay, good. You're in. You're <laughs> in it. But we're, I think we're going to bring Evan and Samantha in for the next episode of the podcast. Oh, that's going to be fun. Uh, talk about loyal employees and. Uh, See what Evan has to say. I was going to say, there's no way I come back for one episode and then get kicked off the next one. No. No. Okay. Um, do you have anything else? No. You guys, again, we're going into the winter season, so take care of yourselves. Take care of your your stuff. Take care of your family. Be safe. And shut up so I can eat my French toast. Yeah. Do you have anything? 
Okay. I'm well, doing what I was told. Shut <laughs> up. Shut up. <laughs> okay, well, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and YouTube at Blue Line Pressure Washing and our website at thewashpodcast.com. If you have any questions you would like us to answer on the air, drop us a line at justin at bluelinepressurewashingllc.com or leave us a voice message at anchor.fm slash bluelinepwllc. And we'll see y'all next time on The Wash.